Welcome to my review of the Nightcore EC21 flashlight. This is a reasonably new light from Nightcore that using the Cree XP-G2 emitter offers five modes of constant illumination all the way from one lumen up to the headline figure of 460. It also has three flashing modes of strobe, beacon and SOS and has the added bonus of a small red LED in the main reflector as well. We'll take it apart and see what we get inside. Inside you have a single plastic tray holding all the accessories on one side and the flashlight on the other. Go through the accessories first to get them out of the way. First up Nightcore provide two CR123A batteries for you to use if you want. You get a little bag containing one spare, two spare O-rings, the what seems to be standard Nightcore lanyard with the Nightcore lettering on it, a little divider you can move up and down to cinch the cord around your wrist and a very narrow diameter section to put through the very small hole on the end of the torch and you also get a pocket clip which is one of the nicest pocket clips I've seen with a flashlight for ages I'll put it on in a second and show you what I mean also you get a holster, then we move on to the manual which is in the familiar Nightcore format English on one side and presumably Chinese on the other finally we have the warranty card worldwide warranty for five years, I think that's the standard Nightcore warranty period and finally in the plastic pack we have the EC21 itself now the first thing you notice about this is really how small it is it's an inch in diameter or 25.4 mil and I think only 108 mil long from end to end. That's really short for a torch that fits an 18650 um, battery. That's pretty much in the size range of the larger AA compatible lights actually. If I uh, just put a few alongside for comparison you can see what I mean. Here on the right is another 18650 light for comparison. That's the Ultrafire WF501B. Um, no effort made to make that one a bit smaller. And Nightcore in the middle. And on the left, we have the Phoenix LD12, which is a light that takes a single AA battery. And it's almost the same size as the Nightcore. Um, mind you, the Phoenix isn't trying too hard to be small for a AA torch. If you want, a small double A there on the left you've got the L10C so you can see small for a double A big for a double A Nightcore EC21 which is really short for a lithium uh, powered torch and then the standard ultrafire on the right um, 108 mil for this in length that's pretty good all the other 18650 lights from Nightcore and Phoenix are around the 130 to 140 mil mark so this is really nice and compact now just take a look at the lens and the reflector now, I don't know if you can see this on the camera but yeah there you can see there's a depression in the reflector and that's where the uh, bonus red LED that's the um, the packet talks about. That's the, the big feature in addition to the 460 lumen output that it has this little 
little red LED squirreled away on one side of the reflector at the front. There's no clicky switch on the tail cap, none at all. The two controls, for there are two of them, are on the front. You have a power button towards the rear and a mode button forward of that. Two individual buttons that can be used individually or together. I've got a nice anti-roll um, bit of detail here. Um, nicely done knurling on the battery tube and at the rear you can just see now coming around the top you have a tiny tiny hole to fit the really thin lanyard through. You have got a bit of detailing on the end and of course with no button there it does tail stand pretty nicely. Um, other details on my example when I first got it the Nightcore logo and the buttons lined up very nicely. After I'd removed the head for the first time and tightened it down again they no longer did so it looks like Nightcore have cut the threads on the front of the battery tube just a little too long. I mean it's only a cosmetic detail but uh, Phoenix manage it on theirs to line up the button with the, um, the logo so a bit disappointing there but only cosmetic. Now return to the pocket clip which you can attach in two positions there or you can invert it and attach there. Personally I like to have the pocket clip at the end and it goes on with a good spring and fits very nicely. Now with this you'll notice that in addition to a good bit of spring tension there Nycra have stamped the metal and you have an additional little barrier to the hem of whatever pocket or garment you've clipped it into. Um, that little lump resists the hem coming back past and out. It's a really secure and nice pocket clip. I really like that. Anyway, now we'll move on to the light itself. You notice Nightcore have added a packet of silica gel to the inside of the light to keep it dry. So after removing that you can insert a lithium cell, positive end forward and watch carefully when I screw it down and turn it on. Right, screwed in. Now we had a pat pattern of four flashes, a short pause and two more flashes when the tail cap was tightened for the first time. That's the reading of the battery voltage. Um, when you turn it on the fancy electronics in the head of the torch read the voltage of the battery and display it as a sequence of flashes. Um, in this case volts, you get four flashes, four volts followed by a short pause to significant to signify the decimal point and then a number more flashes to indicate how many tenths of a volt. So we had four flashes, pause, two flashes, 4.2 volts and it will do that all the way down to three volts. It won't read accurately below three volts. So if your cell voltage drops to 2.9, 2.8, 2.7 or lower and you're unfortunate enough to be using a lithium cell without any protection and you're relying on unscrewing and screwing the tail cap every so often to tell you your cell voltage you won't get an accurate reading when it drops below uh, 3 volts. Just bear that in mind. So now let's take a look at the operation of the flashlight. Insert the battery and screw the tail cap on and you get the voltage reading. Four flashes, pause, one flash, 4.1 volts for this uh, lithium 18650 cell I've got in here. Right, the two buttons here, power at the rear, mode towards the front. If you press the power button, the light turns on. In this case, after inserting a, a battery for the first time, it comes on at maximum brightness. If you press the mode button, 
it cycles through all five levels of illumination. So it goes from low all the way through to high and then back to low. So I'm going to leave it in the mid mode and turn the light off. Now the nice thing about this is that the light has a mode memory and when you turn it on again it remembers the last um, level of constant illumination that you had the light in before you turned it off. So there you go, turn it on and it's back in medium. Now if I turn it off in maximum, when I turn it on again it's maximum. Have the light in, let's say, the second from bottom, which I think is uh, 20 lumens, turn it off, turn it on again, it's back at 20 lumens. Now supposing you want to make the light come on in with the lowest level of illumination, you can do that by pressing and holding the power button when the light is off. And there the light comes on in its lowest brightness mode, the one lumen mode. Now, on the other hand, suppose you want the light to come on in highest brightness mode, you press and hold the mode button to make the light come on. And there you go, it started up in the turbo mode, 460 lumens. So that covers the basic operation of the light in the constant uh, modes of illumination. We also have the flashing modes. Now to access the strobe when the light is off, you give a quick, I'd call it a double click to the mode button when the light is off. So the light's off, quickly double tap or double click the mode button and you're into the strobe, which is a nice, nice fast strobe this one. And you press any button to turn it off again. If the light's on in a constant state of illumination when you want the strobe, you press and hold the mode button. Now if you want to access the other flashing modes, you can now press and hold the mode button again, and it switches from strobe into what Nightcore call the beacon mode, which is a brief flash with a few seconds delay after it before another flash. So that's Nightcore's beacon mode. I rather like that. I don't have a use for it, but I rather like it nonetheless. Now, if you press and hold the mode button again, I think you've already guessed what this is. This is the SOS mode. And you simply toggle between a strobe, beacon and SOS by holding down the mode button until the mode changes. So I'll press mode again, and we're back into strobe. Now, as I said a few minutes ago, there's no mode memory for the flashing mode. So if I turn the light off while it's on, say, beacon mode. So there you go here, it's in beacon. If I turn the light off now, when I turn it back on, it won't be beacon mode. It will be in the last mode of constant illumination that it remembered. The other form of light you can get out of this is, of course, the red light that's advertised on the box, 460 lumens plus red light. Here we go, In the one, on one side of the reflector you have a little red LED recessed, and to access that you simply quickly press the mode button when the light is off and you get a constant red light. You can press either mode or power to get rid of it. So when the light's off, quickly press the mode button and red light comes on. There's also a flashing red mode which can be switched to by now holding the mode button and you can press and hold the mode button again to get back to constant red illumination. Now pressing either power or mode turns it off again. There's one other state in which, well, there's two other states in which the um, red LED is used. The first one we've seen already, and that's the voltage readout when you first screw the tail cap on. Um, 
the other state is when you put the light into standby. Um, this appears to be a mode that Nightcore use, um, or that Nightcore have provided, so that you can use it to find the light in a darkened room. So if you have the light on in a constant state and you press and hold the power button to turn it off, you have a flash that's not quite as frequent as the previous red flashing mode, but it just sits there giving out a dim red flash every second or so. And even with the tail, uh, even with the um, head of the light down, you can just see that. And it has some crazy long battery life, even with the LED flashing like that. Last thing to show you with the modes, the very last thing I think, because I've covered everything else now is the lockout mode. So if you don't want the light activated by an accidental press of one of the buttons, you can press and hold both buttons together and then the light will turn off and you'll be unable to activate it again until you simultaneously press two buttons again. And you know it's entered lockout mode because before it goes to sleep, it shows you the voltage one final time. So four flashes followed by one, 4.1 volts there. And I can press either power or mode, and I cannot make the light come back on. To make it come back on, I must press power and mode together. There, and we're back. Now, just in case I've confused anyone with my description of how to change between modes, I did prepare a handy graphic which should hopefully simplify things. You can pause the video if you want now, I'm not going to read the whole thing out, but uh, that is the user interface in a nutshell. Now one thing I haven't shown you yet is the clip, the pocket clip, which I really like on this light. Now you can have it in two orientations. You can have it on there, that way round, or turn it round and move it down and there. I'll just get the other light back on at this point. I like my lights when in my pocket to have the head of the torch in the pocket and the tail cap upwards. So if you give it a nice firm push down, you've got it on. And it's got a good spring to it, really good spring strength there. And it's also this nice little stamp section in here that's going to provide a good grip around the hem of whatever pocket or waistband you clip it into. I really like that, that's going to hold the light nice and secure in your pocket. If you want to see what the clips are like on the other way around, there, that's it there, that's the other orientation. And if you bring it around, it just about clears the power button, as you can see there. In fact it's just touching, but it's not really applying any pressure I don't think, but there's plenty of other orientations that you can have it. So that's one of the accessories shown. The other is going to be the holster. Putting the light in with the lens up, the velcro comes down almost to the bottom and the light's nicely secured with the two buttons just in the uncovered section of the side there. If you do want the light the other way up with the lens down then you can put the light in quite easily without fear of the uh, tough nylon um, 
scraping against the rubber mode switches because on the inside it's going to be difficult for you to see this unless I shine the light in. Nightcore have actually lined the front three, the front and two of the sides with a very smooth um, feeling material, um, so that when you do slide the light in, it's not going to rub against the more abrasive coating you see on the outside. So that's a nice feature. Um, as far as attaching this to anything, there is a approximately one inch belt loop in there. There's Velcro on the back again with a one inch section for attaching to a bag or something and a D-ring for um, clipping it to anything else you might want to. The other accessory you get is the little hole here for the lanyard, which really is a little hole. I mean it's very very small indeed. And it's quite sharp as well. Well, not sharp, but the edges, they're very angular. There's, um, I mean, you can see rounding at that end and that end, but over the top, the, um, the uh, aluminium feels quite rough, and you can see just scraping my finger against it, a little bit of fingernail has come off there. So I'm not sure that isn't going to wear out the um, material of the um, lanyard pretty pretty rapidly and, and frankly this is like threading a needle in fact I'm probably going to need a needle or a pin to actually thread this through final thing I want to talk about is how the light actually feels in your hand now as I mentioned previously this is one of the smaller 18650 lights it's it's noticeably shorter than many of the other lights on the market um, more in the range of a uh, large double A light like this Phoenix here. You can see there's there's really not much between them. Um, certainly, there's a bit of extra width on the um, uh, night core, but uh, not really much in the way of length. Um, and I find the m the easiest way to hold this in the hand is like this. So you've got a thumb to cover both the power and the mode switches. You can also turn it over and use your forefinger just as easily to press the power and the mode switches. It's very comfortable to use like that and feels very natural, very good in the hand. If you're someone who wants to hold it like this, then it's not so good. It's quite hard to actually get your finger, your little finger in this case, to operate the power and the mode switches in that orientation. Of course, there's, there's no, nothing for your thumb to do. There's no, no clicky switch on the tail cap. Um, so this is actually quite awkward. Uh, well, not awkward, it's, it's quite uncomfortable. You don't get such a good hold of the light because your fingers aren't really round. You can actually, you've got a gap in there as your fingers come up to try and get over the buttons. Um, and my little Phoenix, I could actually, if I had the light in the right position I could simply form a fist round and squeeze my fist to change the brightness levels. I can't do that with the night core. The buttons, are, well there's only one button on the Phoenix but the two buttons here are just that bit smaller and I cannot really operate them comfortably. I can, I can do the power button with hand in a fist but Power, power and mode together really difficult and they're too narrow to allow a, a sort of a two finger operation little finger and the next finger it's, that doesn't work so holding the light like this isn't great and if you want to try and strobe it in that mode it's very awkward and I find that if I'm trying to press and hold the mode switch to activate the strobe when the light's off the palm of my hand is starting to occlude the, the lens like, and it's quite awkward to get get the double tap that you need to activate the strobe there. In fact, 
you can see that I'm getting all sorts of stuff trying to do that with that, the light in that position. So really, you're looking at this being a light you hold like that with the tail towards the rear of your palm and the head um, under your thumb. There is one thing I must mention before I finish this review in that as lights get more complicated and you have a microprocessor controlling them to do all the different brightness modes, the SOS, the flashing, the mode memory and, and everything else um, they start to pick up software bugs. They're no longer a simple piece of hardware with an on-off switch at the tail that just goes on or off. You've actually got a microprocessor in there or microcontroller and there's the chance for someone to make a mistake when they're writing the code that controls the light and that's what we have with this one here. It's a bug that seems to affect the voltage reading feature that you get when you first turn the EC21 on. It's that thing where you screw the tail cap on for the first time and you get a series of red flashes to indicate the voltage that the cell is at. So four flashes followed by one, 4.1 volts. Now that's all very well and good, but around certain voltages you get an incorrect voltage reading coming out. Now I've prepared a cell and got it down to the correct voltage to trigger this bug and I'll show you here on a multimeter here it is it's only a cheap ultrafire cell but the cheapness of the cell there's nothing to trigger the bug because I can do this with a significantly more expensive uh, power supply connected up to the torch and you find that when the cell voltage is around 3.9 volts or 4.9 volts or 5.9 volts whenever it's something 0.9 the torch gets the reading badly wrong and you find instead of saying 3.9 volts it will read 4.9 volts or if you have a cell at 4.9 volts, it'll read 5.9 volts. So it's always adding 1 to the unit. And so on. I, I stopped measuring at 5.9 volts and it was getting it wrong up there as well. So we've got a cell here at 3.9 or near as damn it, 3.885 and that should be enough to trigger an erroneous reading. So remember that, we're inserting a cell with a voltage of 3.9 and we'll screw the tail cap on and see how many flashes we get. So 3.9 volts Now you can see there we got four flashes followed by 4.9 volts. It's increased the true voltage of the cell by one volt. So bear that in mind when you are making a decision whether to purchase this light or not. It's got this great um, voltage display, but it won't go below three volts. That just seems to be the limit of the system. And if you hit something 0.9 volts, it'll add one onto it. So your cell at 3.9 volts is read at 4.9, your cell at 4.9 is read as 5.9, and your cell, or it would be two, two CR123As, if they have combined voltage of 5.9, it'll tell you their voltage is at 6.9. Um, I'm going to contact Nightcore and see if they're aware of this and if they're going to do anything about it, but at the moment, just be aware that there's this weird bug that affects the voltage readings. So overall, what do I think of the Nightcore EC21? Well, I love the pocketable size of only an inch in diameter by 108 mil long. That's a good two or three centimeters shorter than most other lights in this category. Um, I like the styling of the light as well. It's not too aggressive. I like the knurling, it has an anti-roll detail there 
and a slight but not overly aggressive uh, uh, crenellation around the lens. That's nice so you can put the light down and still see whether it's on or not. That's uh, especially useful when you have it in the blinking red standby mode. You can put the torch down in a darkened room and you can still just see the red light blinking out around the uh, gaps in the crenellation. Um, I also love the spread of the modes. It's got a properly low, low mode of one lumen. Not low enough to be moonlight, but to be honest I don't like having a moonlight mode at the start of all the brightness levels on my lights. Um, it's one lumen, it's low enough to be useful and not too low as to be annoying. Um, and then really one lumen, it's adequate for getting around the house at night and the next mode up 20 lumen is much more comfortable for, for walking around at night and then with 100, 210 and 460 lumens you've just got a nice spacing all the way up to the maximum brightness so that's really good and coupled with the user interface um, the really intuitive user interface that's carried over from the larger EA41 um, I really like using this light, it's, it's very easy, very pleasant to use and the complete separation of the modes of constant illumination from the three flashing modes is good as well. I hate it when you get a light and after transitioning up from low, medium, high, constant modes of illumination you then have to cycle through all the strobes and everything before getting down to low. Well this light, the flashing modes are hidden so if you only want to cycle through modes of constant illumination from low to high and back to low again that's possible and that's really good. Um, other physical features. Um, initially I said I really liked the pocket clip on this light but having worn it uh, for a few days I find that this little bit here where the metal's bent down towards the body of the torch but doesn't actually touch it I find that snags the edge of the pocket of some of the thinner trousers I'm wearing and stops the material going all the way into the pocket clip so I'm finding I'm having to double check I've actually put it in my pocket properly and the fabric's not just snagged and remained stuck in the section I've left uncovered by my thumb here. Um, so pocket clip isn't quite as good as I thought but I do really, still do really like the way it comes all the way to the end of the light. A lot of the slightly longer lights the pocket clip finishes about there so you're left with two or three centimeters light sticking out your pocket. With this clip you put it in your pocket and it's all the way in your pocket. Very nice. Um, the holster is very well made as well although I don't tend to use them. Um, the lanyard I do like the adjustable cinch on the lanyard but acting against it is the very thin material, a uh, very thin cord on the end and the ultra small hole on the side of the tail cap to put it through that's actually quite abrasive. Um, I don't know how long that lanyard would last if you use it. You might want to check for wear and tear on that very thin cable if you do use it regularly. Now the disadvantages to the light are, well, I like the voltmeter function that comes on when you first use the light where it flashes the voltage at you but I don't like the fact that as I alluded to earlier it has a bug in it and won't read anything 0.9 volts correctly it always adds on the volt, the extra volt so when you're at 3.9 volts it reads 4.9 volts 4.9 volts it will read 5.9 volts and so on all other voltages seem unaffected but it's got that one bug at 0.9 volts so do that bear, do bear that in mind um, if you want a perfect working voltmeter on your light this isn't it um, the red light in general I'm nonplussed by uh, the red light on constant is alright for getting around at night um, in your house it's fairly low but it may still be a little too bright to preserve your night vision, especially if you're trying to do something up close with it. 
like uh, read a map. It's going to put a very bright spot of light on a, on a map or a document you're trying to read or write on at night in, and you're holding the torch close to that. Um, if I'm doing that sort of thing at night I would prefer a light with a true um, point, something of a lumen moon mode in white light rather than having to rely on a red light for that. Um, that said, the flashing standby mode of the red light is useful, so when you turn the light on and then press and hold the off button you get this very slow flash and as I mentioned a minute ago it's great for helping to find the light in a darkened room and it even works face down through the crenellations of the bezel although it's probably a bit too brightly lit here in this scene for you to see the red light shining through there but then of course you wouldn't be using it in a bright, brightly lit room and that's about it. It really is the voltmeter bug and the, I suppose, the poor beam pattern as well on the red LED that um, I mainly dislike about this light. But overall, um, I can live with the voltmeter bug just about and I can live with the poor beam pattern of the red LED by basically not using it on constant. I didn't buy it for the red light, so it's just going to sit there, either winking at me on standby where the beam pattern doesn't matter in the slightest or not being used at all but again go back to the positives I mentioned a few minutes ago and all of those outweigh the last few negative points I've mentioned anyway thanks for watching this review and you can switch off now or hang around a few minutes longer um, for my attempts at some beam shots first of all I'll be showing some beam shots against the white card background here with the lights turned off and then I'll be going outside so you can try to get an idea of what the light looks like in a more realistic environment. We'll start off with the red LED and you can see once the focus hits the compromises that have been made by slotting that little red LED into the side of the main reflector. Now. The red LED is on the right hand side of the uh, picture here and you can see there's an awful lot of rings showing up from the um, finely textured uh, main part of the reflector there. So that's the red LED and it doesn't put out a terribly uh, even light. We'll move on to the constant uh, illuminations now. And this has a nice um, spot in the middle it looks very nice to look at. It's um, not coming up so well on the uh, screen here, but it is a nice, nice smooth beam with a hot spot that gently fades out um, to the spill. And there we've gone all the way from the one lumen up to the 460 there. Two, three four and five. I've just come out into the garden to try and get uh, some beam shots for you and so you can see what the various brightness levels look like. I've actually got one lumen coming out the front of the torch at the moment, the lowest mode, and it's not even enough light for the camcorder to focus. If I go up to the next mode 20 lumens I believe it is. Now just have enough light for the camera to focus and you can see the beam pattern on the grass there and you can see the frost twinkling as the light shines over it. Go up to 100 lumens two hundred and ten lumens and the full 460 lumen, which is quite reasonable. That can light up the top of the tree, no problem. If you can hear noise, it's because I'm standing next to a stream, just on the other side of the fence. And I was going to try and get through this gate, 
but it has frozen solid. So I'll just uh, try and hop over and get you some beam shots looking down the lane. Right, I've managed to escape from my own back garden, uh, climbing over the frozen gate, and we're looking down the lane towards uh, a group of three Scots pines, about 200 metres away. And if I start to increase the brightness, we might manage to focus on something. Yeah, we've just got it now, that's just the uh, trees at the side of the road. I think we're on 20 or 100 lumens now, we'll find out in a minute. Oh, I just can't make out the Scots Pines that are 200 metres away. Maybe just there where the beam's going. But I think we're seeing that 150 metres there, which I think tallies with the throw measurement given by the manufacturer. So I'll step up again. One lumen, 20, 100, That's 210 lumens and the full 460. It is a bit misty tonight. You might get to, get to see those pines on a, on a clearer night, but for now it's very cold and very misty, and that's what it looks like looking down a very, very frosty lane. <laughs> 